Welcome. We're talking today about Culture Bubble and Agile Island. Culture Bubble is an idea that was popularized by Michael Sahota, and he wrote about it again recently in his book, uh, Leading Beyond Change, um, himself and Audrey Tara Sahota, wrote a book, Leading Beyond Change, A Practical Guide to Evolving Business Agility. In the LESS community, there's a guide for a parallel organization, and there's an example of that. Uh, for a BMW self-driving car uh, of use of a parallel organization. So it's not like a brand new uh, concept. The thing is that what is the overlap between um, Culture Bubble and Agile Island and what's the difference and what are they actually, okay? Um, so this is just my understanding. So... A culture bubble is really more about evolutionary leadership where the organization has evolved a bit. Maybe there's some parts of the organization that really uh, have a more advanced culture than anywhere else in this example, because this is about agility. Let's say it's an agile culture bubble. Uh, we're doing kind of better things uh, than the rest of the organization. It's almost like we have our own little microculture. Culture is local anyway. And we're really made, we're able to make lots of uh, progress with agility in our area. And yeah, that's useful, it's, uh, it's, it's gotten merit, but what they also do with a, uh, with a culture bubble is they have adapters, so to speak, around it, so that if somebody outside the bubble asks for a Gantt chart, for example, the, the people in the culture bubble would give them a Gantt chart because they don't want to get, have an antibody attack from the rest of the organization that this uh, this part of the organization is a bit um, it's not compliant or whatever right so um, so that's kind of interesting that uh, while there's some goodness within the bubble itself uh, they don't make any efforts to try and convince sell uh, uh, to other people and that's that kind of ties in nicely with the way I deal with people as well I don't sell I don't convince um, some people uh, get disappointed by that, but for me, it's all about pull, and that's what Culture Bubble is about as well. It's about volunteering. Uh, people actually want to be in that area. Um, it's not a silo. That there's, there's a significant amount of work that can, can be done together, but there still are lots of dependencies on the mothership, so to speak. And respect would be a big thing in the, in the Culture Bubble. A bubble can be large, and it's really about meeting people where they are. Um, uh, for me, I just have a little bit of a an extra thing to, to that, which would be meet people where they are, but uh, not in the basement kind of thing, you know. And but to be fair, in the in the bubble, you'd, there'd be kind of good things going on, and so the culture would be evolved, and the leaders would be uh, demonstrating really agile behaviors. Because uh, while um, agility isn't top down, unless there's really strong support from the top, it's going to be difficult for it to 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 really um, take on in the organization so a bubble though by its nature uh, can burst uh, but what i've noticed in michael sahota's writing uh, since 2013 he seems to before he was kind of calling culture bubble out as a kind of a failure mode a kind of a last last chance saloon kind of thing that you might want to try but i've noticed now that he's, he's he's almost suggesting that it could be an adoption approach and that you can protect the bubble uh, by growing it um, and the person within the bubble actually um, getting maybe getting promoted so then that kind of broadens the bubble but you have to be very careful that whatever leader comes in if there's a leader that comes in that they they have the same kind of culture mindset as the people in the culture bubble otherwise the bubble will collapse and that's what happens quite often actually um, make lots and lots of progress and then somebody retires or they um, they progress in some shape or form. And this is a test of an organization for me in, the, in terms of their, uh, their real willingness to be agile. They promote people who are like command and control people from hell. And 
it really resets the teams uh, quite a bit. That's a, that's a litmus test that I apply, and I, it kind of tells me that the organization isn't serious when that happens. Ne- nevertheless, the culture bubble uh, idea has merit, in my view. Um, there is one thing that makes me a bit uncomfortable about the uh, culture bubble, and that's not to judge people who use it. It's it's just it's uh, it's an approach, and it's it's valid. Um, if I was to look at Agile Island, which has a lot in common with Culture Bubble, and would be kind of underpinned by the Parallel Organization Guide uh, from Less, um, in an Agile Island there would be no tolerance of Agile BS and uh, BS brown stuff. I hope you know what I mean by that. So no Agile BS. So if someone asks for a project plan, you know, take a run and jump, right? <laughs> Uh, might give them a transformation map to give them the optical illusion that uh, looks like there's milestones on, on the plan, but actually the time horizon is getting more vague as time goes out, uh, not kind of bowing at the altar of command and control. So Agile Island would be very much stronger about that. And in the Agile Island, they'd be promoting exec agility as well, where not only do we want to make sure that new people coming in uh, are preserving the culture and making it even better, but we're actually teaching execs, uh, if there are any execs within the Agile Island, um, that there are better questions to ask that will foster really good agility. And Agile Island would be limited to 50 people. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the Dunbar number, uh, and uh, just by the name of uh, Dunbar, and apparently we can deal with 50 to 150 people depending on how many friends we have so let's let's assume we've got lots of friends <laughs> so uh limited to 50 people there'll be lots of agile goodness in there and what would be promoted within the agile island would be horizontal growth so uh because there's going to be a ceiling uh very quickly actually uh i noticed in, in one client where basically uh People act the way they're measured. Uh, tell You tell me how you're measured, I'll tell you how you behave. And so if your only way of, of growing professionally is to go that way, you know, to get more money, basically, and do well for your family and so on and so forth, well, then you're going to be, whether you like it or not, whether you admit it or not, you're going to be stepping it off each other to go up unless some people just accept it. They're not going to go up. And so on an agile island, the idea would be that you grow horizontally as well. And this is inspired as well by something that isn't yet a guide in less. Uh, Craig Darman talked about this idea a lot in his three-day certified less practitioner training, where essentially you would um, you progress based on the number of skills that you can coach other people on. Um, and so you you want to do well, you 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 can grow this way, you grow more skills to the extent that you can do extra, you've got extra specialties that you didn't have before, and you're becoming more flexible as a person so that when work comes into the team, we can actually do more uh, work in the team, we can be more adaptive and so on. Um, it's independent as well. So the, uh, the Agile Island would be independent of suppliers because whatever about trying to change uh, your own culture, changing the culture of a supplier is impossible, I would say. Um, so trying to make sure that you've got people who are internal and uh, if they're not internal, maybe they're seconded in from suppliers to the extent that even the people management uh, performance reviews, all that stuff is, is done by by us and not by, by the supplier. So we don't want any interference from management and the supplier whatsoever. Also in terms of... Um, trying to preserve agile goodness we'd want to be focusing on an area that doesn't have dependencies on the mothership so it might mean focusing on the number two or number three priority not the number 99 priority because it won't get enough focus but something that's reasonably urgent and important but it's just not at the top of the uh, agenda right now and uh we 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 want to make serious inroads so the we'd be trying to we would it would be kind of sad if you set up this Agile Island, all sorts of good things going on, trunk-based development, no branching, uh, all you know, using horizontal growth, all these wonderful things, and then we're dependent on the mothership for like 100 different things. And so it's like we're it's like we're walking through treacle. And I don't mean treacle in a nice way. I mean sticky. You know, we can't make progress. So uh, so the, uh, the Agile Island needs to be signif- significant enough to make an impact. But again, just like Culture Bubble, uh, it's... Uh, It's underpinned by respect. It's based on pull, um, helping people who want help, not inflicting advice on people, not uh, imposing agility on people. 
growth is also needed uh, for survival. It's based on volunteers and it's not a silo. So some people think that, oh, I've got this function here and they do agile that way. And they've got another function there and they do agile that way. And so there are different agile islands. I mean, you could, you could call it that, but actually what I mean by agile island is uh, you've got uh, people working across the value stream cutting across a few functions or departments are working with a product or with a product group and they can make progress on their own from the idea true to delivery to the customer repeated value stream map. And so that's the basic idea of an agile island. It is a potential adoption approach uh, where it's really, really difficult. Now, some of you might be saying this is a real failure mode and it's kind of sad to be hearing people even talking about culture bubble or agile island as ideas that you might uh, might want to try um i'm going to quote um joe justice i saw him in a video yesterday he did for agile israel in 2021 and someone asked a question what if it's really difficult why do people don't i don't want to don't want to do this you know what would you do and he said well you might need to start a new company and i think he's right and this is kind of a way, it's kind of uh, an extension of an, of an Agile Island would be you set up a separate PL actually completely, because actually another thing from an Agile Island is you'll be independent from the exec team. And so how do you achieve that? Eventually the exec team will come to try to stick their claws into it, won't they? So set up another company isn't a bad show, actually, from Joe. Um, and it's, it's sometimes it's so difficult that actually you do need to some, start something new. Um, maybe um time isn't on our side maybe uh we we if we had a metaphorical runway maybe we don't have that much runway and evolution can take a while can take years and do we have years um i guess change is an option right we do uh, sur- uh, well uh, surviving is an option as deming said so it's it's an approach i'm not saying it's the best approach in the world i just wanted to illustrate culture bubble i think it's got a lot of merit in summary can be large meet people where they are it's got an evolved culture with really good uh, agile leader thinking. There's adapters to protect the culture bubble from the, the mothership. Agile Island would be independent, would uh, had a, have a significant enough area to make an impact, uh, would promote horizontal growth, would have agile goodness, no agile BS whatsoever, limited to 50 people, and uh, would support exec agility because unless the execs are agile, you know, we're, we're all kind of wasting our time, really. Um, and then what's in common between them is respect. It's based on pull. Growth is needed for survival. It's based on volunteers. And not people have been voluntold, volunteers. And um, it's also not a silo. So uh, they're the basic ideas of Culture Bubble and Agile Island. Michael, I hope I did, uh, did uh, your Culture Bubble idea justice in uh, describing it here. But I'm happy to continue the conversation continue to comment or ask questions on social and uh, I'd be happy to uh, chase those up for you. That's it for today. Uh, Thank you very much. Keep submitting your questions or fantastic questions. Thank you.